Okay guys, so we're gonna cover the mount position and why maybe you don't enjoy being here. So particularly when you're a smaller grappler, I find that going to mount could be a position that doesn't feel particularly dominant. I mean, at least it didn't for me for a long time. I would go into the mount position and I would be bridged off and they'd roll me into close guard consistently. So I didn't even like to go there. I much rather either taking the back or even staying in side control. I didn't want to progress position. And I find that when I talk to a lot of particularly women or smaller grapplers, they find the same sort of situation. Now that's not even imaginable to be because I just love it here. So we're gonna look at some points that are gonna help you control from the mount a little bit longer and a few things that I like to do to make sure my partner's options are minimized, okay? So we're gonna start from the head to the hips. So first of all, I'm gonna make sure I turn my partner's head in a certain direction, okay? If Gabrielle can look square or if he has control of his head, he can determine which direction he's going to bridge, right? He can either bridge left, my left, or to the right. If he bridges in a straight line, all he's going to do is expire energy and sort of just bob me up and down, okay? So he wants to either bridge in this direction, thank you for showing a bridge, or this direction here. So when I'm in the mount, okay, I'm gonna choose my dominant arm or whatever arm you have available to control. And I'm gonna give my partner a big cross face. When I reach through, I'm gonna reach all the way to my partner's armpit and then I'm gonna rotate them back towards me. That means, oh, that means I don't have to drive as much weight through my shoulder to apply shoulder pressure. I prefer to just use the, the whole of my chest to drive my partner's head in one direction. If I just go here and drive my shoulder into their chin, Gabriel can still rotate his chin over my shoulder. So if you turn your head this way, see how he can still slip his chin. And now I'm putting pressure on the neck, but I'm not preventing him from turning his head and in turn bridging in that direction. So I'm gonna reach through nice and deep and then I'm gonna draw my elbow back and now look how it's my whole chest driving into Gabriel's face. It's much harder for him to slip his face now over my, my shoulder here, okay? So I'm gonna consistently keep his head looking in this direction. So for him to bridge to the right now, it's gonna be much more difficult, right? He still can, but it's going to put a twist on his spine and it's gonna be uncomfortable and much weaker. So everything we're doing here, yes, he can potentially still do if he's very powerful, if there's a big weight difference, but it's gonna minimize and it's gonna be exhausting for the person on bottom. That's our goal, okay? So when I reach through here, I rotate back and I drive my weight through. Okay, when I drive my weight through, I'm not tripoding that pressure through, I'm opening out my body like this. So I'm blanketing my weight on my partner as opposed to, to trying to pinpoint that weight and just drive in forward. So I'm here and I rotate back. So for him to bridge now in the more, in the more powerful direction is gonna be in this direction. So we've sort of limited our partner's options already. He can only really bridge in this direction to try and roll me over. So what I can do now is control the elbow on this side, right? So I can't now prevent him looking in this direction where I just force his face here. So my option is going to be to elevate the elbow or get this arm up and in turn, disconnect that elbow from the mat. For Gabrielle to bridge up to his knees, he needs to connect his elbow to the mat. Yeah, bridge and turn up on your knees. Yes, see how he connects his elbow to the mat. If I keep his elbow off the mat and he tries to get to his knees, get to your knees. On your knees. Wow. <laughs> it's, yeah, okay, good, yay. <laughs> okay, it's very, very difficult, right? Some people who are very flexible can still twist, but again, they can't really complete that full bridge. Yeah, kind of. It's super right? hard because you're pulling her. So, when I'm here and I have my position, look, I'm gonna collect this elbow off the mat. Eventually, I'm gonna wanna climb it up here so that I can attack, right? And I have a lot more options from here. We have the head, head and arm, we have the arm bar, we have multiple attacks we can do from this position. But if I'm just looking to control, I'm just gonna keep this elbow elevated. And I can even bring Gabrielle's elbow up on top of my leg here. And now I can look, post my hand down to catch my balance, okay? Eventually, I'm gonna be looking to scoop under, walk the arm up, and now I can replace my head against his tricep and I can base my hand on this far side here. So if he bridges now, look, it's much easier to catch my base. So if I bring this arm up high, you can see it's much harder to keep his face facing in this direction, but his head is gonna be stuck square and looking to the ceiling, which means for him to bridge powerfully, he can only bridge up. And if he bridges up, 
he's not moving my weight side to side. He's just wasting energy. So now we have control of this elbow. We kind of minimize him turning either direction. Gabriel's options are sort of minimized to dealing with my legs, right? So if I have control of his elbow here, he can push down with this far arm on this side. Bring it here. He's gonna start to bring this down or even some people look to scoop under your leg. If he does this, he's giving me that mounted triangle here. Okay, so most people won't opt to scoop under that, but just so you can recognize if he does scoop on this far side, he's giving you a submission here because I have control of this arm. So now we're gonna look at the positioning of our hips and our feet in relation to his body, okay? I personally like to be in a high amount. I like to have my hips higher than Gabrielle's hips. This looks risky if I had no upper body control, but because I have collected one of his arms or I have the arm up nice and high here, when I'm in this position, it's now very safe to go up high. Okay, different story if I had no control and I went up here. If you bring your elbows in tight, babe. Yeah, here. Okay, now this is a different story. I'd wanna work the arms up first. So I like to have my hips slightly above. If my hips, are in line with Gabrielle's hips and he bridges, he's going to throw my weight, right? My heaviest point is on top of his strongest point. So if he does a big bridge, okay, it's like doing a glute bridge. You can lift a, a lot more weight with a glute bridge than you can with a military press. I don't know where I was going with that, but he can throw. <laughs> Do I ever lift weights? Okay, but he can, he can really throw my weight if I'm on top of his hips. Okay, that's my point. So. I'm gonna bring my hips slightly higher. So when he does a bridge, he's doing a sky bridge. He's just bridging into air and he looks silly and he's wasting energy, okay? So with my feet now, I'm gonna bring them in close to his hips. This lets me feel when he's going to bridge. If he is bridging really powerfully, I can sort of catch my balance and make sure I'm minding myself here, okay? And I can also have my knees out nice and wide. When I have my knees nice and wide here, I can catch my base either side. Now, there's a few uh, little things I would keep in mind when it comes to this. I have wide knees when they're very strong and they're bridging heavy, right? But if Gabriel is keeping his elbows in very tight, okay, maybe I lost control of the arms. Ooh. Here, okay. Now I would bring my knees back in tight because when his arms are in tight like this, he's not usually bridging as much. He might do little bridges, but they're not gonna throw my weight as much. So that means I can bring my knees in tight and start to separate the elbows from the body. Okay, whereas when I'm here, I would just wanna make sure I have one of the arms controlled. Okay, so I can avoid if I have nothing controlled here and I go wide, look how much easier it is for him to fill that space and collect from my legs. Okay, so we're keeping our hips above our partner's hips. We're separating the arms away from the body, okay, either here or just collecting that elbow. We're pinning the head to one side and now we've really limited his options. Another thing I would recommend is to bail out quicker. So if I'm in the mount position and say, I'm here, or if I'm here even, and you do a big bridge in this direction, is to bail out of the position. I'm not gonna keep a hold of the mount here if Gabrielle keeps bridging here. So if you bridge in that direction, look, if I stay connected to him and I squeeze too tight, so I'm just clinging on to him, and what people will tend to do is clutch like this and squeeze their arms. They'll burn out their upper body and they think that applying pressure is squeezing as hard as they can. This is just gonna burn your arms out. You wanna do that blanketing motion I'm opening out here and it feels much, much heavier. Now if we try and bridge, it's way harder. Okay, look what I ball up. Go, all the way. See how much easier it is for him to turn me. You can see the difference. I'm concaving my back and I'm rounded. So it's easier for him to roll me and I'm connected to him. So I'm gonna blanket, but if I feel him going and I feel, oh, I'm gonna lose position if I stay here and he's twisting his hips, I bail out and I move around him like a climbing frame. He's the climbing frame, I'm moving around him as opposed to just trying to cling on to him the whole time, okay? And lastly, 
if you are having problems getting to mount or, or controlling from mount, my last tip would be when you're getting onto mount. So uh, to pick your timing of when you take the position. I personally, if I'm in side control, so I've just passed my partner's guard, I wouldn't go to mount. Like, let me go. Oh, sorry. I wouldn't go to mount like this. His elbows are already low, and now this is incredibly hard to peel his arms away. I can set it up instead from side control. Collect in front of the elbows, so now they're disconnected. I can peel up. And now it's a completely different position when I'm controlling from here versus when his elbows are already tight, blocking me, and I slide across here. Now it's very different, right? Now I have to, from here, if you don't want to bridge my leg and catch my leg, it's way easier. This is this. Hey guys, so if you liked that, then leave a comment. If you didn't like that, please don't comment. Please exit the video immediately. But um, let me know if you have any questions that I could hopefully answer in future. And like, subscribe, do those things. I don't know what else. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, and stay tuned for more videos.